This is my electronically programmable door chime. It even says that kind. And uh, it's also the programmable telephone ringer and the background music player. It does a lot considering it's a Dell Dimension XPS D300. This was a hand-me-down of a hand-me-down of a hand-me-down. It is also the only five and a quarter inch uh, floppy drive and zip drive, uh, 100 meg, that I have on the network. Everything, of course, is networked, so I can't access this anywhere if I need to. So yeah, if you have old five and a quarter inch floppies and possibly zip disks, if either of these drives even still work, this is a 1.2 meg, by the way. Uh, if you have those kind and you need them, I might be able to transfer that. Uh, this particular machine, like I said, is an XPS D300. It's a Pentium 2 that was originally designed for uh, Windows 95. <laughs> it was running Windows 98, but I had shoehorned Windows XP on it. Uh, I believe it has about 192 megabytes of RAM, and that's it. It's running XP Pro Hacktivated, and it does one thing. Well, two things, actually. Three things, actually, but... <laughs> it runs Winamp, and it sits there with the Jetsons doorbell. My doorbell is the Jetsons, and if I go ahead and play it, if I can find the key here... That's my doorbell. And I have a computer running 24-7 for the odd chance that somebody rings it. If I happen to have the windows open or they hear it through the door, they're often very impressed if they know what it is. That's one function of it, and I will get uh, further into detail about uh, how this came about in a little bit. It also runs VLC Player, just because another copy of Winamp was really impractical for this. This is running VLC, and it's connected to the Shoutcast, which is playing uh, Higher Ground by Stevie Wonder, which you can see is what is playing on the Shoutcast server on the main station. So that plays in the background at a very low volume, as you can see there. This is also a very old compact Presario 1425 monitor with manual controls, no less. This was actually a volume control here, and it's also the power if you press it. And there's other controls under the uh, flap there, and I believe that was a mute button. There were no speakers on the monitor, but somehow I forget exactly how it was hooked up, and I could control the volume uh, to the speakers. Uh, the third thing is kind of hidden behind the scenes in Windows. It's just using the built-in fax driver, and uh, that will play a ring sound, which I have set to the uh, Geico, an old Geico commercial ringtone of a uh, guy's cell phone. Uh, you've probably heard it in other videos. I'll see if I can cue that up real quick for you. And this is what the uh, the ringtone sounds like. Of course, I can set that ringtone or the doorbell to anything that I so choose, such as maybe this one. Now, how did this come about, and how does it interface with a doorbell button? Well, it came about uh, quite a long time ago when we were looking for houses, and uh, we saw this one, we liked it. And uh, I was sitting in our apartment, and I was watching TV, flipping through the channels, and I happened to go past Cartoon Network, and the Jetsons were on. And uh, I said, oh wow, I haven't seen the Jetsons in forever. So I just let it play for a little while and I was watching and their doorbell happened to ring, which obviously you heard before. And I said, oh, their doorbell rang. You know, come to think of it, I don't remember seeing a doorbell button on that house. Well, I'll just have to put that on the list. And so it was on the list and it sat on the list for a while. But then I said, well, I really want to get that doorbell to work. How do I make a doorbell button play a song? So the easiest option for me was to just run a regular Windows PC that runs Winamp because I know the X key on the keyboard 
will play the file that's currently loaded in Winamp. So I said, okay, this should be pretty easy. Just get a PC, sound card, speakers that are amplified or whatever, and I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, keyboard and hit the X key, it'll play the file and we're all set. So this machine is running a specialized sound card. It's actually an old ISA sound card, an old original Sound Blaster uh, 16 that has an amplified output with, uh, I believe, a volume jog dial on the back of the card itself when they had analog controls like that. So that outputs uh, amplified sound already, which goes to the various speakers I have throughout the house. There's this one here, which is just actually out of either an old flat panel TV or maybe a pair of computer speakers. I don't know where it's from, actually. And you can hear it is playing the music in the background there. It's kind of, this one is really quiet. I don't really know why. But the beams just happen to be like that, so I just mounted it up like that. And that black thing up there is the uh, speaker, the main speaker for down here. Uh, right along with all sorts of wiring where everything ties in. And yes, those are open connections, not even taped, because I was that's kind of an ongoing project. I wanted to add some more to see, but there's actually a speaker here, although I never connected it. And I also wanted to run one outside to the back to the screen room, which is on the other side of the window there. Uh, so I wanted to run one there. I also wanted to run one to the kitchen, which is somewhere up in here, like kind of behind all the duct work. So... Uh, that's again a project that has been put on hold uh, pretty much indefinitely for some time. You can see there actually is a regular doorbell here that uh, I had put in. But here's the speaker for what we're talking about. And you can see it's an Enginola. used to say Motorola, but the plastic was all yellowed. So I actually spray painted it and then I punched out all the little holes in it again with a toothpick. But I didn't want to cover the Motorola. Motorola uh, logo, so I just pasted over that with Enginola just for fun. And here's the one upstairs. This is like a little speaker set you can plug into an iPod or some crap like that. And uh, it's actually just double stick taped in place and it stays. This actually has a switch where you can turn it on and off here. Just like that. But I leave it on all the time. It plays 24-7. As quiet as that sounds, when you wake up in the middle of the night or in the morning, your sound, your hearing is very sensitive. So I'll wake up and there's a song playing and I'm like, what song is that? Oh, wow. <laughs> so anyway, that's that. And just while we're here so you can see it, that's a strobe light for the, uh, that I put in for the alarm. This used to be on a truck. It says 12 or 24 volts DC in the back, if you could see it, but that'll be another time, another video. Your next question is, well, how did you get that to possibly interface with a uh, doorbell button? Well, that one is a little bit of a story. 